Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to be 2 Chronicles 5 to 9, Proverbs 27, and Psalm 91. Let's get started. Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and saw the silver, the gold, and all the vessels, and the treasuries of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is in Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled before the king at the feast that is in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the Ark, and they brought up the Ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The Levitical priests brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who had assembled before him, were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, so that the cherubim made a covering above the ark and its poles. And the poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they cannot be seen from outside, and they are there to this day. And there was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And when the priests came out of the holy place, all the priests who were present had consecrated themselves without regard to their divisions, and all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, and Jonathan, their sons, and kinsmen, arrayed in fine men, with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood east of the altar with 120 priests who were trumpeters. And it was their duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison and in, in, in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments, and praise to the Lord, for he is good, his first steadfast love continues for in joyous world. The house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness, but I have built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his hand has fulfilled what he promised with his mouth to David my father, saying, since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build the house, that my name might be there. And I chose no man as prince over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David and my father to build a house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. That the Lord said to David my father, Whereas the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, that the Lord said to David, my father, Whereas the name, it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, it is not you who shall build the house, but your son who shall be born to you, <laughs> you shall build the house for my name. Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made, for I have risen in the place of David, my father, and sit on the throne of Israel. As the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And there I have set the ark, in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with the people of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform, five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven, and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to them. You spoke with your mouth, and with your hand have fulfilled it to this day. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, that you have spoken to your servant David. But, I'll, but will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. 
Yeah, have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer of your servant, pray before you. That your eyes may be open day and night towards this house, the place where you have promised to set your name, and that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place, and listen to the pleas of your servant and your, of your people Israel when they pray toward this place, and listen from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbour and is made to take an, made to take an oath and comes and swears his oath before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, repaying the guilty by bringing his conduct on his own head, and vindicating the righteous by rewarding him according to his righteousness. If your people is are defeated before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and they turn again and acknowledge your name and pray and plead with you in this house, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people is are and bring them again to the land that you gave them to and to their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and acknowledge your name and they and turn from their sin, when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your sins, your people is, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and grant rain upon your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence or bright or blight on little Jew, or locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land at their gates, whatever plague, whatever whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer uh, whatever please made by any man or by all your people is each knowing his own affliction and his own sorrow and stretching out his hands toward this house then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways for you you only know the hearts of the children of mankind that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the day as they live in the land that you gave to your own fathers Likewise, when a foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, comes from a far country for the sake of your great name, and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays toward this house, hear from heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may, may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward the city you have chosen and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven, hear from heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people, with them, and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to you toward the city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for them, your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, then you are angry with them, and give them to an enemy, for, so that they are carried away captive to a land far or near. Yet if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, or repent and plead with you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, and I have acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and with all their soul in the land, in the land of their captivity to which they were carried captive, and pray toward their land, which you gave to their fathers, the sea you, that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place their prayer and their pleas, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, O oh my God, and let your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayer of this place. And now arise, O Lord God, and go to your resting place, and you and your you and the ark of your mind. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in their own goodness. O Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. Remember your steadfast love for David your servant. As soon as Solomon introduced his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. When all the people of Israel saw that the fire come down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed down with their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and gave thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his steadfast love and Jewish forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifice before the Lord. King Solomon offered as a sacrifice 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. 
There are three student therapists duly writers with the instruments as music. For music to the Lord the God, to the Lord that King David had made, for giving thanks to the Lord. For his steadfast love endured forever. Whenever, whenever David offered praises to, by their ministry, up opposite them the priests sound trumpets, and all is austere. And someone consecrated it to the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord. But there he offered the burnt offering and the fire of the peace offerings. Because the burnt offering that someone had made could not hold the burnt offering and the grain offering and the fire. And that time Solomon held the feast for seven days, and all Israel was a very great assembly from Levi Hannah to the Brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day they held a solemn assembly, for they had kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their joyful and glad of heart to the pros- for the prosperity that the Lord had granted to David and to Solomon and to Israel's people. They thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from me. Hear from heaven and will forgive their sin <clears throat> and heal their land. Now my eyes will be opened from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this way. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house, that my name will, may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David may your father walk, doing according to all that I have commanded you and keeping my statutes and my rules, then I will establish your royal throne, as I covenanted with David, your father, saying, You shall not lack a man to rule with but if you turn aside and forsake one, <sighs> forsake my statues and my commandments that I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck you out from the land that I have given you, and this house that I have consecrated for my in it, and I will cast it out of my side. And I'll make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And at this house, which was exalted, everyone passing by will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? Then they all will say, Because they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on the other on other gods and worship them and serve them. Therefore he has brought all this disaster on them. At the end of 20, 20 years, in which Solomon had built the house of the Lord and his own house, Solomon rebuilt the cities that Hiram had given to him, and settled the people of his own. And Solomon went to Hamath, Zoba, and took it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness, and all the store cities that he built in Hamath. He also built up a Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars, and Balath, and all the stored cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots, and the cities for his horsemen. And whatever Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion, all the people who were left of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, for their descendants who were left off of the Mendele, whom the people of Israel had not destroyed. These Solomon drafted and forced labor, and so they are to this day. But of the people of Israel, Solomon drafted made no slaves for his work. There were soldiers and his officers, the commanders of his chariots and his horsemen. And these were the chief officers of King Solomon, 250, who exercised authority over the people. Solomon built for, brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the house of the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not live in the house of David, king of Israel, for the places to which the ark of the Lord has come are holy. 
Then Solomon offered up burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of the Lord that he had built for the festival, as the duty of each day required, offering according to the commandment of Moses for the Sabbath, the new moons, and the three annual feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Booths. According to the ruling of David his father, he appointed the divisions of his, the priests for their service, and the Levites for their offices of praise and ministry before the priests, as the duty of each day required, and the gatekeepers in their divisions at each day. So, for so David, the man of God, had commanded, and they did not turn aside from what the king had commanded the priests, the priests and the and Levites concerning my, any matter and concerning the treasure, treasuries. Thus was accomplished all the work of Solomon from the day of the foundation of the houses of the Lord was laid until it was finished. So the house of the Lord was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion and gave him a lost on the shore of the sea in the land of Ed. And here I am sent to him by the hand of his servants, ships, and servants familiar with the sea. And they went to Ophir together with the servants of Solomon and brought from there 450 talents of gold. He brought it to King Solomon. Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. Having a very great retinue and camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stones, and when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing, nothing hidden from Solomon that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food of his tables, the seating of his vehicles, and the attendance of his servants, and their clothing, his cupbearers, and their clothing, and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more wrath in her. And she said to the king, The report was true that I heard in my own mind of your words and of your wisdom. But I did not believe the reports until I came and my own eyes had seen. And beyond half the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You surpassed the report that I heard. Happy are your wives. Happy are the are these your sons who has delighted in you and has set you on a throne as king for the Lord your God. Because that you may execute because that you may execute justice and righteousness. And then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, and a very great quantity of spices and precious stones. There was no spices such as those that the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Moreover, the servants of him and servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Ophir, brought algum wood and precious stones. And the king made from the algum and wood supports for the house of the Lord and for the king's house, lies also and harps for the singers. There were never was seen the like of them before in the land of Judah. And King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all that she desired, whatever she asked, besides what she had brought to the king. So she turned and went back to her own land with the servant. Now the weight of the gold of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred and sixty-six talents of gold. Besides that which the explorers and merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia and the governors of the land brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made two hundred large shields of bean and gold, six hundred shekels of bean and gold went into each shield, and he made three hundred shekels of shields of bean and gold, three hundred shekels of gold went into each shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Abad. The king also made a great ivory throne and overlaid it with pure gold. The throne had six steps and a footstool of gold, which were attached to the throne. And on each side of the sea were armrests and two lions standing beside the armrests, while twelve lions stood there, one on each end and of a step <clears throat> on the six steps. Nothing like it was ever made for any king. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was not considered as anything in the days of Solomon. For the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hera. Once every three years, the ships of Tarshish used to come, bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Thus, King Solomon excelled all the kings of the earth in riches and in wisdom. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put into his mind. Every one of them brought his present articles of silver and gold. <clears throat> and garments, myrrh, spices, horses, and mules, so much year by year. And Solomon had 
thousand stalls for horses and chariots, with twelve thousand horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot seat, and with the king in Jerusalem. And he ruled over all the kings from the rest and land of the Philistines unto the border of Egypt. And the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as snow, and he made soda as plentiful as sycamore, as sycamore of the Shephelah. And horses were imported for Solomon from Egypt and all and from all lands. Now when now the rest of the acts of Solomon from first to last are they not written in the history of Nathan the prophet and in the prophecy of the Hebrew the Shiona and in the revisions of Ido the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. Proverbs twenty seven. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you, do, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another, uh, let another praise you, and not your own mouth, a stranger, and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and a sand is weighty, but her fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, and good overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Murder is open rebuke, than hidden love. Faithful are the words of wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. One who is full loves honey, but to one who is hungry everything bitter is sweet. Like a bird that strays from his nest is a man who strays from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his own as counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not go to your neighbor's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. <clears throat> the prudent see danger and hide himself, but the simple go on and suffer. Free. Take a man's garment, garment, garment when he has put up security for a strange, and hold him pledge when he puts up security for an adult, for an adult tourist. Whoever blesses his neighbor with a loud voice rising early in the morning, he will be counted as cursing. A continual dropping on a rainy day and quarrelsome life, wife are alike. Mm, to restrain her is to restrain the wind. Uh, restrain the wind. <laughs> to, or to grasp oil in one's right hand. Mm, iron sharpens eye. So one man sharpens the man. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. And he who guides his master will be on it. So as a mortar reflects face, face, so the heart of man reflects the man. Show and abandon. Abandoned are never satisfied, and never satisfied are the eyes of man. <clears throat> the crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and a man is tested by his praise. Crush a fool in a mortar with his pest, with the pestle, along with the crushed grain. Yet his folly will not depart from it. Know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your heart. For riches do not last forever, and does a crown endure to all generations. When the grass is gone and all the new growth appears, and the vegetation of the mountains is gathered. The lambs will provide your clothing, and the goats the price of a field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food, and for the food of your household, and maintenance for your girls. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Messiah who will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of a fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is like is a shield and buckler. You will not be the terror of the man, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only... Look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because ye have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you well, but lest you strike your foot against the stone, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the, lung, the young lion and the serpent you will trample on the foot. 
because he holds fast to me in the house of the front. I will protect him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be him with him and I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you raise us for giving our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.